Hey guys, this is Doug Hunsaker. Um, today I'd like to do a quick overview of the effects of sweep on a main wing. And uh, this has become kind of obvious to me recently in some of the work I've been doing. And um, and I see a lot of you know flying wing type designs out there. And they're, uh, they're kind of becoming the norm for some UAV designs. And I'd just like to talk about the effects of sweep on that main wing that, that you know, some effects that may not be extremely obvious um, to the to the beginning designer. So um, I'm going to be using mockup to uh, display this. Uh, you can use mockup at bluecraft.com and then set up a free account and then uh, you go to slash mu2, that's mockup2. And uh, I'm just going to add a wing here. And this wing, uh, you can see this is a rectangular wing. And I'm actually, just for the purposes of this demonstration, I'm going to change this to a, uh, an elliptic wing uh, so that we can look at the effect of sweep on the kind of the ideal efficiency of a wing. Um, so if I change the tip cord to a minus, uh, to a negative number, then it automatically creates this elliptic wing. And, um, and this wing, let's see, it should tell us down here, some properties of this wing. Um, I'm gonna have to update these results real quick. Okay, so we're looking at an area of 6.2 and a longitudinal length or a mean chord of 0.7854 and, uh, and we have a wingspan of eight, which we actually define up here. So um, so this is, uh, you know, this is fairly high aspect ratio wing, uh, somewhere up maybe around 10 or so. Um, Okay, and and also just for the purposes of demonstration here, we're just going to leave the airfoils as the default, which is uh, NACA 2412 airfoil. And, uh, you know, this is going to be true for any airfoil that you're using for the most part, um, but uh, we're just going to leave those at the default for right now. So what I'd like to look at is the, is the relationship between sweep and drag. Um, okay, so... The first thing we're going to run here is, uh, is you know, if we have just no sweep at all, um, what does our drag look like? And and uh, we're going to, to keep things consistent, we want to look at these at the exact same lift coefficient. So let's say that we have a target lift coefficient of 0.5, for example. And uh, And when I click Update Results here, it's going to evaluate what angle of attack we need to be at in order to get a lift coefficient of 0.5. So it's saying uh, 3.34 degrees. It will automatically set. Um, oops. It will automatically set our condition now to that 3.3424 degrees. And so next time we run an analysis, it will be at that angle of attack. So now I'm going to run forces and moments. And when I update those results, it will tell me a drag coefficient. So we're at a lift coefficient of 0.5, a drag coefficient of 0 0.0178. To catalog these results, uh, we're going to use Excel. Uh, so we're going to have a couple of columns here. Um, we're going to have a sweep. All of our lift coefficients are going to be a 0 0.5, and uh, and we're going to have a drag coefficient here. So at zero, we said so we are at uh, 0.0178. That's our drag coefficient. Okay, now um, another thing we can do is look at the, the lift distribution on this wing. So I'm going to click on Distributions, Update Results, and it's going to give us a text file that it downloads that, that we can open and see all of the distributions. I'm just going to select all of that and copy it into Excel. Put this on a new tab. Okay, so in here um, we've got a whole bunch of uh, data. Um, we've got the X, Y, and Z locations of several points along the wing and uh, and then all these different columns of information at, at each of these points along the wing. So you can see we have a section lift coefficient over here, a section drag coefficient, and a moment coefficient. Now this section lift coefficient is based off of the local chord, which uh, you can see as we scroll down, um, 
here's our chord as a function of span. Uh, we start off with a chord of 1, and at the tip, that's going to go to 0, basically, because we have an elliptic wing. And so um, you can see this the section lift coefficient, because it is an elliptic wing, the section lift coefficient stays constant across, uh, across the span of the wing. But we actually want to look at the lift coefficient that's normalized by the, um, by the mean chord. So we can look at the lift distribution on this. So I'm just going to start another column here and call it uh, uh, CL. And this is going to be this, this lift coefficient multiplied by its local chord and then divided by, uh, let's see, what was that? We need to use the mean chord, uh, which we have down here, the longitudinal length, 0.7854. So that's going to give us a, a uh, lift coefficient um, that's kind of normalized to the aircraft instead of the local chord. And uh, this breaks up for each wing. We have a different section here, so I'm just going to copy that down. Okay, so now we have the lift coefficient as a function of span on the uh, entire across the entire wing, and I'm going to plot that. So this is my y coordinate, which is um, the lateral position along the wing, and the lift coefficient, and I'm just going to plot this here. And so we can see that we have this uh, this lift coefficient distribution that's an elliptic lift distribution. If these axes were square, then, then we'd be able to see that that's an elliptic distribution here. Um, and so that's what we'd expect. You know, we're working with an elliptic wing. This is a very efficient design, and we get a, a lift distribution on the wing that's elliptic. Well, now I'm going to repeat this process um, for each of the, uh, you know, for a bunch of different sweep angles. And I'll speed up the video here so that, um, you know, because I'm just going to be repeating this over and over again. But we'll do this in increments of 5 um, up to, uh, let's go up to 30 degrees. And I'll just fill these in, and also I'll fill in different tabs here um, for each of these sweep angles. I've gone through and, and run a bunch of different sweep angles. And now I've plotted the drag coefficient as a function of sweep angle here on the x-axis. And, uh, and actually, what's maybe more interesting is to look at the percent increase in drag. So if I take uh, this minus that divided by that, copy that down, and let's look at that in a percent. Okay, so this is um, this is a percent increase in drag over zero sweep, and uh, you can see at five degrees we're a five percent increase. Uh, by thirty degrees we're at a twenty percent increase in drag, and so um, and actually let's just change this guy over here. So we're looking at percent increases in drag. So this is I mean this is pretty notable, and and you know I know there's a lot of good reasons to have sweep on a flying wing, you know, for stability, um, stability being the main reason actually, but, um, but we're going to talk about maybe some other ways to handle that, but, but uh, notice that like we have a major increase in drag when we begin to sweep, uh, when we begin to sweep that wing, and why is that? Well, um, I've plotted here the lift distributions from each of these different scenarios, and uh, you'll notice that, uh, so this blue line here is at zero sweep. And zero sweep, again, we were getting a nice elliptical lift distribution. And uh, and as we, inc as we add sweep to this, you'll notice that the center region actually drops its lift significantly. So this is at 5 degrees, uh, 10 degrees, 15, 20, 25, 30. You'll notice that this region here of dropped lift gets bigger and bigger. Well, anytime you're, see, the most uh, efficient uh, lift distribution on a wing is an elliptic uh, lift distribution. Um, and so we're, so we want the maximum lift to come from the center of the wing. But when we start to sweep, we start to drop lift in the center of the wing where, where it's really, we wish it were at a maximum, it almost hits a minimum at that point. You know, obviously you're going to 
drop down to zero at the wingtips, but but now we're also dropping down to a really low number in the center. And so we're losing all of this lift here in the central region that, uh, and, and because we're losing that lift, we're having to create it in other ways. We have to actually increase the lift here outboard in order to account for that, you know, to stay at this lift coefficient of 0.5 in this example. Um, so we have to increase the lift out here because we're losing lift in the center and we're not getting a nice elliptic lift distribution over this entire thing. And so we're, we're creating lift very inefficiently. And, uh, and so because of that, our induced drag goes up and, uh, and therefore, you know, we saw earlier how much that increases the overall drag of this wing. Um, now I should point out that mock-up slightly exaggerates this phenomenon just because of the numerics of how mock-up is set up. It's actually kind of exaggerating. You know, this lift probably isn't going to come to like this cusp type of thing here in the center. This is probably going to drop off and then, you know, kind of make maybe a parabolic shape within here. But but this phenomenon is real, you know, that, that it will drop the lift in the center region. And, uh, and just quickly, I can explain what causes that. Uh, basically, when you have a swept wing like this, your vorticity now is being generated along the, the quarter cord, basically. You know, for a high aspect ratio wing like this, your, your vorticity here is being generated along the quarter cord. Um, and, uh, and you'll see that this quarter cord now is at an angle to this quarter cord. And so you have vorticity now that's being generated kind of at an angle on one side of the wing and on the other side of the wing. Well, well, this is causing downwash. Anytime you create vorticity in some point, you're, you're creating upwash in some parts of the flow and downwash in other parts. So in front of this wing, we're, we're creating upwash, and behind the wing, we're creating downwash. Well, this downwash now, because this quarter cord as it is in an angle to the other quarter cord, the downwash from either side of the wing are affecting the other side of the wing very significantly. And so... The downwash generated, for example, by the left wing is now decreasing the angle of attack on, on the right wing and vice versa. And so these two are kind of competing here in the central region. Uh, and so it's, it, it really uh, decreases the lift significantly in that region. Um, uh, let's look at, uh, you know, something that's insightful is just to, to look at um, if we just do like a bird wing plan form in Google and, and do a just an image search on that and just kind of look at the wing plan forms of birds in general. You'll notice that very few of them have any sweep at all really in the central region and, and in fact some of them uh, you know so this may look a little bit like sweep but but it's very very minor here in the central region. Birds really don't have much sweep. If they do have sweep, you know, for example here, uh, it's outboard. You know, they that sweep has moved outboard for stability or other reasons. Um, but but they don't have a lot of sweep here in the central region. In fact, some of the birds you may you may even argue that that this looks like it's a negative sweep in the central region. Um, you know, where the wing is swept forward instead of back and and uh, that can have kind of the opposite effect of what we're talking about here. So anyway, it's just something to keep in mind. Um, I'd like to do one other example, actually. It'll take me just a second to build that in Mockup Pro, and I'll be back to show the results of that. Okay, I'm just going to walk you through real quickly how I did this in Mockup Pro. Um, from Mockup Plus, from the web version, um, I can just go to File, Export to Mockup Pro. And it will give me an input file. I just downloaded that input file and dropped it into a folder that I'm calling Sweep Example. And uh, so inside of here, I've got uh, mockup the executable. I've got the Sweep Example that I downloaded, and um, I also add a profile here, NACA 2412 profile that is used to make the STL. And then, um, and let me just talk about real quick what I modified in this input file that I downloaded. Uh, first of all, I, I gave it the path to my license for Mockup Pro, and then um, inside of this run command, I actually have several different things I want it to do. Um, it's going to first run the target CL, so we're setting that CL to 0.5, then it's going to run forces, so update the forces and moments, and then run distributions and output the uh, the results of that in a text file, 
and then it will create an STL file. Uh, if I scroll down here, we're using the same reference area and links. And, uh, and then in the definition of this wing, I also made one other change. Um, so usually you just have a value for sweep here on this wing. And instead of that, I'm actually going to, um, we want to play with that sweep so that the sweep can be zero at the root, but a different value at the tip. And so I'm going to read in a sweep file called sweep.txt. And uh, this is a sweep.txt file. It's pretty simple. It's just an XY file. In the X column is your percent span. So at the root at zero, um, at, then we're going to have zero sweep. So the Y column is a sweep. Uh, so I have zero at the root, and then linearly changing to at the tip here, we'll have 60 degrees of sweep. So uh, we'll just try that out and see how that goes. And then uh, the other thing that I changed is I set the grid to 200. So it's going to be uh, using 200 points along the wing instead of 40, which is the default in Mockup Plus. Okay, so um, so I'm going to run that here, uh, Mockup out, and uh, sweep example dot JSON. And the first thing that it does is uh, obviously trim that for a lift coefficient of 0.5 and then um, it's going to output a bunch of files. Before we, um, before we get into these results, let's look at the geometry and just see what that looks like. So I can take, uh, in this folder now, it created an STL file, and uh, I'm just going to drop that into Mockup Plus so we can see what that looks like. And I'll move it forward here so we can kind of see the difference between the other wing that we were looking at. So, um, so this has this wing has still has an elliptic plan form. So the core distribution is elliptic, but um, but we're sweeping. You can see at the center line we have zero sweep, and then we're linearly increasing that sweep until we hit 60 degrees at the uh, at the tip. So this has the same plan form area, the same um, you know non-dimensional or lengths, you know lateral and longitudinal lengths that we're going to non-dimensionalize things by, um, but it has a very different sweep distribution file and we're going to see what the effects are here in just a second when we look at the results. Okay, so um, so on the screen here it gave us a here's a drag coefficient column has all the different components from the left wing and the right wing and viscous and inviscid but the total aircraft drag is right here at the bottom and, uh, and if I just copy and paste that into this workbook which I've already done here I just pasted that uh, drag coefficient in there and you can see that it's only it's less than two percent greater than our baseline with zero sweep. So we've hardly increased our drag at all by uh, by using this kind of a sweep distribution. And uh, and then in the, on this linear tab here, I've dropped the the uh, distribution file information and plotted that against the other distributions. And uh, and and it's here in this pinkish line. So you can see that this distribution looks quite a bit different than the other distributions. It's not elliptic, like you know, this is our the the most efficient distribution is this blue one. That's the perfectly elliptic distribution. But uh, the key here is that it's not significantly dropping lift at the center line, and so um, and so the induced drag that it's creating is much closer to that of an elliptic wing, and. Uh, so anyway, this was just an example to kind of show you the effects that sweep can have, and and I realize you know it's really easy to manufacture a wing, uh, you know this traditional way where you just have a, a constant sweep, and uh, you know you can make that with a hot wire cutter or whatever, but uh, but a lot of drone manufacturers now are actually machining molds for their wings instead, so that they can do um, you know more intense layups of carbon fiber or Kevlar or whatnot. And so if you're going to machine that mold, you know, you might want to look at something uh, something that looks a little bit more like this and maybe a little bit more like a bird wing and, uh, and regain some of that efficiency um, that we would lose if we just went with a straight uh, swept wing like we see so commonly done. So with that, uh, we hope that that's been useful and interesting. And if you have any questions about what I've said here, feel free to contact me, uh, Doug at BlueCraft.com. I'd be happy to talk to you more about this. Thanks.